First coach Tubby Smith in freshman football back in Rayford, North Carolina for the better part of the next two decades. Sutton was at Tubby Smith's side. He hit the upwardly mobile track when he got the head coaching job at Tennessee Tech. But now having people at his side is a virtual necessity. 22 months ago today, Sutton was hospitalized with a rare disorder. Steve Cyphers found that he discovered uncommon support. Cut hard, Ray. Don't wait. Mike Sutton is teaching, preparation for a midseason game. But in the last two years, some of the most important lessons he's taught those around him have nothing to do with basketball. What they've learned, you know, hopefully is that you can, you know, you can overcome some things that uh, if you love something and, and, you know, you can continue to do it, you might not be able to, you might have to adjust how you do it, but you can still do it. Sutton loves coaching. In 1998, the year Kentucky won the national championship, he was an assistant to his longtime friend, Tubby Smith. After taking a job at Tennessee Tech in 2003, Sutton led the Golden Eagles to the regular season conference championship in 2005. Six weeks later, while attending a basketball tournament in Virginia, Sutton complained of flu-like symptoms. My hands and feet were sore, and in the hotel room on Saturday, I had trouble opening a bottle of water and using my telephone. By the next afternoon, Sutton, 50, was a patient at Norfolk DePaul Medical Center. He was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, attacking the nerves outside the brain and spinal cord in varying degrees. It can result in complete paralysis and in 5% of cases, death. The first thing he asked me was, am I going to die? And I said, I mean, my gut reaction was to say, of course you're not going to die, you know, not knowing whether that was true or not. With each day, each hour, his condition worsened as he lost the use of his feet, his hands, and then his legs and arms, and finally, his speech. A GBS patient sent me a letter saying that it, it felt like being buried alive. That's a pretty accurate description of what happened initially. Kept alive with a ventilator and a tube in his trachea, Sutton was flown to Nashville at the end of that first week. Almost two months into his recovery, he was allowed to see more visitors. He was 50 pounds lighter. When did you know you were in a dire situation? Um, when I started seeing people. He just looked helpless. He was just sitting on the bed. He had, a, uh, like I said, he had the tubes in him. His wife was sitting on the bed with him, and he was, uh, he was skinnier. He lost a lot of weight. I saw Tubby. That's probably the point that I uh, knew that I was really sick. I could see it. That's probably the key moment. I can see it in Tubby's face. It's like your brother, you know, seeing someone that you, you care so much about, helpless like that, without able to even move. All he could do is was really bad his eyes. Push, push, push. Hurry. Come on. In late July of 2005, Sutton spent hour after hour, day after day, re-educating his muscles aware that 25% of GBS patients do not make a full recovery. It can take as much energy to try to move a finger or to try to grip something that doesn't look like it's that hard. It's harder than anything I ever did as an athlete. That fall, Sutton raised his arms over his head. That was a big day because we have a little joke with one of the granddaughters is, uh, you know, you say, who's a wombat? And she, and she would raise her arms. And I raised my arms in the hospital bed and I said, I'm a wombat. After more than seven months in four different hospitals, Sutton went home before Thanksgiving in 2005. That season, assistant coach Steve Payne, along with Saul Smith, Tubby's son, ran the day-to-day -day operations of the team. Sutton coached from afar, talking with Coach Payne every day. 
People don't realize that, you know, he was always running this program. And from the, you know, it was never a deal where he was all totally out of the loop. Coach was always running this program. It always has been and always will be Mike Sutton's program. Back by the bench in the middle of last season, Sutton is back on the bench now, able to use a walker for longer and longer periods. Okay. Physical therapy continues three times a week. Slowly, strength and dexterity are returning to his hands and fingers, to his feet and toes. I'm in that constant state of just trying to, trying to get better, just like you live with the basketball team. You want to play your best basketball at the end of the year, come tournament time. But, you know, for me, you know, my tournament may still be a long way away. Well, that's good. Keep him on his right hand whenever you guard him. At no time you thought of resigning. Never. Um, stubborn? No, not stubborn, but I'm a ball coach. That's what I am. I'm a ball coach, and I want to be the world's oldest living basketball coach. Everybody in you are. Let's go.